from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesia. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from our donors. The first are Len Gillis and Claudette Smith Gillis from Toronto, Ontario, for prayers and their intentions. The second is an anonymous donor from Rothsay, New Brunswick for the repose of the soul of her husband, who died on February 23rd, 2011. This is relatives and friends, and for her children and grandchildren. The Daily TV Mass Ministry is made possible by the generous contributions of all our donors, and in a special way, our monthly donors. This month, dedicated to the Holy Family, we ask in our community prayer that all those in our families who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit may find relief and healing through our Heavenly Father. Our sincere thanks to all our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your spirit. As we have begun the season of Lent, we were reminded, repent and believe in the gospel. But believing in the gospel is a difficult thing quite often. Particularly, the readings of today challenges us to love our enemies. Let us ask God's pardon and mercy for the moments where we fail to take up the challenge the gospel presents to us. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Turn our hearts to you, eternal Father, and grant that seeking always the one thing necessary and carrying out works of charity we may be dedicated to your worship. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses convened all Israel and set the law before them. Hear, O Israel, this very day the Lord your God is commanding you to observe these statutes and ordinances to, so observe them diligently with all your heart and with all your soul. Today you have obtained the Lord's agreement to be your God and for you to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, and his ordinances, and to obey him. Today the Lord has obtained your agreement to be his treasured people as he promised you and to keep his commandments for him to set you high above all nations that he has made, in praise and in fame and in honor, and for you to be a people holy to the Lord our, your God, as he promised. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A 
happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently, or that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Happy are they who follow the I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Happy are they who Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. This is the favorable time. This is the day of salvation. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory when the disciples had gathered around Jesus on the mountain, he spoke to them, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his Son rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Jesus Lord Jesus Christ. You might have heard about this preacher who gave his Sunday sermon on forgiving your enemies. After a long sermon, he asked, how many are willing to forgive their enemies? About half of them held up their hands. Not satisfied, he lectured for another 20 minutes and repeated the question. 
This time he received a response of about 80%. Still unsatisfied, he went on talking about the importance of forgiving the enemy for another 15 minutes and repeated his question. With all thoughts now on Sunday lunch, all responded except one elderly lady in the front. Mrs. Jones, are you not willing to forgive your enemies? Asked the preacher. I don't have any, replied Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones, that is very unusual. Can you tell us how you manage not to have any enemies? I am 96 and I have outlived all of them. Jesus for sure is not talking about outliving our enemies. Jesus is talking about the real and the alive persons with whom we live and work. The call he gives is very real and important one. But in reality, if we are honest with ourselves, we have enough difficulty in loving whom we have to love or who loves us like our parents, spouses, children, friends. But Jesus invites us to love our enemies. The first thing that we notice is that when we follow Christ, he invites us to a higher standard of living. Not as the world invites us, not as the world wants us, but how God wants us. Secondly, he invites us to impossible tasks, or tasks that we want the least. For instance, take up your cross, deny yourself, love your enemies. Thirdly, we are invited to be like the Father. God loves the world. He loves the sinners. He loves his enemies. And Jesus goes on to give the example of how the Father makes his Son rise on the evil and the good and send rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. Jesus himself would show the same love to the people who crucified him by asking God, God, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. He practiced what he preached by praying for those who would persecute him and kill him. That is why St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, would go on to say, God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We are invited to be like our Father in heaven. And on a practical level, there was a caption that I read. Forgive your enemies, it messes with their heads. Can you imagine someone has done really something very terrible to you? and you invite them for a very nice lunch and talk to them very nicely. They are going to be wondering whole day or whole month why this has happened. Oftentimes, we think that they don't deserve our love because they have hurt us. They have wounded us. For sure, most of them don't deserve it as we don't deserve God's love as well. At the same time, we don't love them for who they are, but because for who we are. That is a call that comes from God. I repeat again, oftentimes people don't deserve our love, but still we love them because of who we are and what God calls us to be. Jesus makes it clear, if you don't do anything different, what difference does it make? Everybody else is doing the same. Those who love, they love. Those who respect, they respect. What good are you expecting? When we call ourselves as followers of Christ, then we are challenged to be different, to make a change. 
Jesus gives another concrete way to practice our love for our enemies, to pray for them. Pray prayer and for their salvation leads us for different understanding. Pray for their change of heart. Pray for their salvation. Pray for their conversion. The more you pray for them, the more God will give you a heart to love them. It is very hard to stay angry at people that you have been praying for. Prayers changes our attitude. Prayer changes our outlook. And prayer changes the way we treat others. So dear brothers and sisters, though we are presented with a huge task, it is the only way that we can create a new kingdom of love and peace. And this is the kingdom that Christ came to establish. May God continue to have the grace to understand the call of God in this holy season of Lent. As we continue our journey, may we know that God is present in our journey and he will give us the grace and the courage to forgive even our enemies. Let us bring forth our prayers and petitions. We pray for ourselves that we may have the willingness to take up the challenge to the gospel presence to us, even to forgive our enemies and to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let's going to pray for our family members and friends who are hurt by what they have said, what they have did, the families that are fallen apart because of various reasons, that they may come together, understanding God's love for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We ask in our community prayer that God might guide us to enter more deeply into the spirit of Lent and into the forgiveness, reconciliation, and renewal that, is, that it offers us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We take a moment of silence to bring our personal intentions to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, close my eyes. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May these blessed mysteries by which we are restored, O Lord, we pray, make us worthy of the gifts they bestow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. 
and so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Show unceasing favor, O Lord, to those you refresh with this divine mystery, and accompany with the salutary consolations those you have impured with heavenly teaching, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve one another. Amen. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.